by 2010, end of 2010, it was effectively bust. Because then part of HMV, the um, music business, um, it was the book side, um, went bust or, or was sort of sold at the point when the alternative was closure and was bought by an, a Russian businessman. Um, and at that point, I turned up. Um, and I'm a bookseller, have been forever. Um, and I always thought that, although clearly the challenges of Amazon were significant, um, and I didn't know quite how much more significant they would get as Kindle um, came along, but that bookshops in themselves are, are valuable, important and treasured places. And if you run them well enough and make them nice enough places, people will continue to buy books from them. Um, um, so that, that brought us to 2011. Um, and life was quite difficult then because of Kindle, which obviously changed reading habits. But again, my belief was that there was a natural sort of equilibrium that would be reached when people read a bit on their Kindles, but mainly read physical books. And that has indeed come to pass. And we now have a decent business, makes not a huge amount of money, but enough money. Um, and but, but it was five years of quite hard work to get there. Well, it, it had been um, run very much in, the, in a traditional multiple retailer fashion, i.e. every shop has to be the same. Which if you do that for bookshops is a disaster. Um, we have bookshops up and down the land, you're trying to sell books in Hampstead, you're trying to sell books in Sunderland. If you do the same bookshop in both of those, neither will be happy. Um, um, my central strategy was devolve as much responsibility to the shop staff as you can, particularly to the bookshop managers, um, get them to create the best bookshop for that particular environment. Um, and we also spend a bit of money tarting up the place, um, putting in better furniture, simple things, not, not huge transformations, but just making the better shops, but above all, trying to get a shop that made sense in Middlesbrough, made sense in Bolton, made sense in Islington. I'm an independent bookseller before, and all I did was effectively come in towards us and say, look, each of you have got to behave as though you're an independent. This is your shop. If you do that, you'll be fine. If you don't, <laughs> we're closing. Um, and, and it was sort of fairly easy to do from that perspective. Um, but also encourage efficiency because um, I, I think it's true of many independents, but it certainly was true of Orsons. They were, they were doing things in the way they'd always done them and they'd never been forced to confront just quite how inefficient that was. So we do run it a lot more efficiently now. Indeed, W. Smith still have returns rates uh, of roughly 25%, so roughly a quarter of what you buy in, you send back to the publisher, um, which you can do in books. Um, you can't do that when you're an independent book shop because the, the amount of effort and time and money spent doing that is unacceptable. And at Dawn Books we have virtually zero. Um, now at Waterstones we're down to about 3%. If you think about it, that's an enormous amount of books that used to flow backwards and forwards with all the people out to do that and it's a really dispiriting, boring job as well. So it's, some of it was just really simple stuff like that. Always underpinning is it, do you make the shop a better place and do you also make it a more fun place in which to work? Because if you do that, then the service will follow. Happy um, booksellers, happy uh, staff make for better service. Well, I've always done a lot in my own business. Um, in fact, it had pretty much ended at Waterstones. They used to do signings, you know, you get the big author to come in and do a signing, but we now do an, an immense number. And we do it, one, because it, it makes our shops more fun places to be in, more relevant within the community. It brings people into the shop. In themselves, they don't make any money, um, but they create that community connection. But they're also really fun to do. So again, it's one of those things where you get a very virtuous cycle. The staff really like doing it. They get to meet authors. Authors like it. Customers like it. We don't see any benefit there. And in the old day, we'd want to measure it. You know, we sold X number of copies at an event. Well, it never pays for it that way, but it certainly does in terms of sort of general good feeling towards the business as a whole and Watsons in particular.